Alkynes range from very simple compounds to ones that are really quite complex. Let me show you two structures that span this range. The carbon-carbon triple bond is the functional group of alkynes, and the very smallest one is acetylene, one of the simplest organic molecules on the planet. At the other end is histrionicotoxin, a highly lethal compound that is found on the skin of certain poisonous frogs, mostly in Latin America. The structure has two carbon-carbon triple bonds. The frogs use this to protect them from predators, but the substance itself is rather notorious because it's the key constituent of the poison arrow preparation. Native cultures have long used the extracts from frogs to coat the tips of their arrows and make them more lethal. Acetylene itself, by the way, is an important industrial compound because it burns with a very hot flame. When it's used together with oxygen, it burns in a very hot flame and is the preferred fuel for welding torches. For organic synthesis, acetylene can be a very effective starting material, as I'll show you in a separate video. At the moment, let's take a good look at the carbon-carbon triple bond. You know we have three different bonding theories, and the structure I've shown here is drawn according to the Lewis bonding theory. Its main value is that it shows how we can expect electrons to be arranged within the molecule so that every carbon has a filled outer shell. In this case, the carbons share three pairs of electrons, and then they each share a pair of electrons with a hydrogen. Rather than show all the dots, we're more likely to simply use lines to show the triple bond. As useful as this is, it also is limited because it gives us no picture of where the electrons are or why bonds really form. Valence bond theory gives us a more detailed picture. To begin with, we're talking about carbons that are only bonded to two atoms, so they're sp hybridized. The two carbons are held together by a sigma bond, a bond that's made by end-to-end -end overlap of sp orbitals, as I've shown here. You may recall that the carbon-carbon double bond of ethylene consists of a pi bond as well as a sigma bond, and that pi bond is formed by two p orbitals that are held parallel to each other on adjacent carbons. We have the same thing in alkynes. These sp hybridized carbons have p orbitals that are held parallel to each other and can overlap. But because these carbons are sp hybridized, they each also have a second p orbital. And those p orbitals on the carbon atoms are held at 90 degree angles to them. So they're in a plane that sticks out straight to us. So the triple bond consists of a sigma bond made up of overlapping of two sp orbitals and what looks like two pi bonds made up of overlapping p orbitals. While it's helpful to think of it this way at times, it isn't a totally accurate picture. Molecular orbital theory gives us a better picture of how the electrons are really distributed. It turns out, in addition to the sigma bond that I've mentioned, the pi bond is made up of a cylinder of shared electron density between the two carbons. So the p orbitals all overlap, which we can simply indicate by drawing lines in this cylinder. So we have axial symmetry, of the pi system in alkynes. Let me show you what all this means for structures that have the carbon-carbon triple bond. Remember, these carbons are sp hybridized, which means each carbon uses two hybridized orbitals sticking in exactly opposite directions, 180 degrees from each other. So each carbon has one sigma bond, and then each carbon has another sp orbital that's oriented 180 degrees away. What this means is there's a linear axis running down the center of four atoms that are held together. So whatever A and B might be that are bonded to these triple bond carbons, they're in a linear arrangement with the two carbons themselves. So we see sigma bonds attaching A and B to the carbon-carbon triple bond carbons, and all four atoms are in a straight line. The molecule is linear and symmetrical. There's some very good news here. This means that there are no stereochemical issues related to the triple bond. There are three types of alkyne structures. One is acetylene itself. Each carbon has a hydrogen attached to it. A second is a molecule that has an alkyl group on one carbon and a hydrogen on the other. We call these terminal alkynes because the triple bond occurs at the end of a chain. And the third type has no hydrogens bonded to the acetylenic carbons. You'll see that whether we have a terminal alkyne or an alkyne with two carbons attached to it dramatically affects some of the chemistry. Which brings me to the fact that when a hydrogen is attached to an acetylenic carbon, that hydrogen is unusually acidic. Take a look. An acetylenic hydrogen can be removed by strong base to make something called an acetylide, an anion. 
The pKa of this acetylenic hydrogen is about 25, which is much more acidic, as I've shown here, than a hydrogen bond to a carbon-carbon double bond, or a hydrogen that's simply bonded to an sp3 carbon. A pKa value for an ethylene hydrogen of 45 is 10 to the 20th times less acidic than an acetylenic hydrogen. The difference in acidity is ascribed to the fact that the acetylene anion is much more stable than the anion derived from taking a proton off of ethylene or removing an alkyl hydrogen. We can easily explain this by looking at the orbital that contains the electrons in the negative charge. The electrons and negative charge in an acetylene anion are in an sp orbital. That's 50% s. The negative charge derived from an ethylene hydrogen is in an orbital that's sp2 hybridized. And if we take a hydrogen off of an alkyl group, the negative charge is in an orbital that's sp3 hybridized. The greater s character that a hybridized orbital has, the closer to the nucleus it is. The nucleus is where there's positive charge that stabilizes negative charge. So having greater s character puts a negative charge where it's more stable. Therefore, it's more easily made. And you can see that the differences are truly dramatic. So this acidity, it turns out, is a property we can exploit for organic synthesis of acetylides, but not well for alkenes or alkyl groups. I show an equation here where the acetylenic hydrogen from a terminal alkyne is removed by LDA, a base that's called lithium diisopropyl amide. This is a very strong base and it completely removes the hydrogen. It's easy to see why. Stronger acids push equilibria to weaker acids, and the acetylenic hydrogen is 10 to the 10th times more acidic than the amine hydrogen, which has a pKa of 35. Of course, you'll need to know how to make LDA, and to save you the trouble of looking it up, I've shown the equation here. When diisopropylamine is treated with butyl lithium, a very, very strong base, the product is LDA. And speaking of products, the acetylide anions that are made this way turn out to be very good nucleophiles because this carbon right here has a pair of electrons that can be used to form a sigma bond. This is one of the reasons that acetylene and terminal alkynes are valuable for organic synthesis. It turns out to be a good way to make carbon-carbon bonds. And speaking of synthesis, let me give you one quick peek at an important reaction of alkynes. Based on what we know about alkene chemistry, it's no surprise that the pi electrons of an acetylenic bond can be used to form a bond with electrophiles. When the carbon-electrophile bond is formed, it makes a cation intermediate. And just like we saw for alkene chemistry, that cation intermediate will react with a nucleophile. So, electrophilic addition is an important reaction of the carbon-carbon triple bond. I'm going to leave you with an interesting question to think about. Compared to alkenes, which have a carbon-carbon double bond, do you think acetylenes are more reactive toward electrophiles or less reactive? I'll talk about that in a separate video.